They can be found in about half of the tap water supply in the United States. I'm talking about Forever Chemicals. This is according to a new study by the U.S. Geological Survey. So I want to thank my TikTok subscribers for voting for this story as the bonus for the week. If you want to vote too, make sure you subscribe to my page only during my next live event. Now I want you to know, I am not trying to scare you with this information. This is simply important new information that you should know about. Plus at the end of this video, I did some digging and I'm going to tell you how you can reduce your exposure to these so-called forever chemicals. First, to the research. In this brand new extensive report, the U.S. Geological Survey detected at least one of the many chemicals known as PFAS or per and polyfluoral alkyl chemicals were found in about 45% of U.S. drinking water samples. They looked in both private and public water supplies in 716 different locations nationwide from 2016 to 2021. The USGS found exposure to PFAS was more common in areas like the Great Plains, the Great Lakes region, the East Eastern Seaboard and Central and Southern California. And in those places, the chemicals had a higher probability of being detected in urban areas where there was a history of contamination compared to more rural areas. So what are PFAS? PFAS chemicals is the general term for thousands of synthetic chemicals that are found at this point in everything around the world and take a really long time to break down. The usage of some of these PFAS chemicals in the United States has been phased out, but others are still being used to this day. They've been found in various industries and products since the 1950s because of their ability to repel oil and water. They've been used in things like Teflon nonstick products, stain and water repellents in fabrics, carpet, cosmetics, paint, in cleaning products, food packaging, and firefighting foams. Because the chemicals are so pervasive, the Environmental Protection Agency says PFAS chemicals are found in water, air, fish, and soil. And the Center for Disease Control says, while they're certainly declining, PFAS chemicals are definitely found in all of our bloodstreams from adults to newborns. Take a breath. I know. Let's talk about the health concerns around PFAS. The EPA and CDC both say exposure to certain PFAS may lead to reproductive, developmental, and hormonal issues, along with some cancers and increased cholesterol levels. Now, some people have higher exposure to PFAS chemicals than others because of their occupations or where they live. For example, someone who works in manufacturing and is involved in making products that contain PFAS chemicals will have a higher exposure rate than someone who lives, say, in a rural area and works as a writer. What the hell? Why aren't these things banned? Well, the government has been trying to get rid of them for years. Some manufacturers have voluntarily made commitments to stop using them, but as of March of this year, the EPA has proposed the National Primary Drinking Water Regulation Rule, which will establish a legally enforceable level for the amount of PFAS chemicals that can be found in drinking water in parts per million. This regulation should become fully enforceable by the end of this year. So in the meantime, how can you limit your exposure to these PFAS chemicals? First, you need to find out if PFAS are in your drinking water. If you get your water from a public drinking water system, you need to reach out to your local water utility and ask them what they're doing to limit your exposure. You can also test your tap water through a PFAS test. Just make sure it's processed through a state certified lab. Once you get the results, you can compare them to the state's standard for safe levels of PFAS in drinking water. And if you're still concerned, you can contact your state's EPA or health department and ask them for their recommendations. You can also consider installing an in-home water treatment filter, but make sure you are getting the ones certified to lower the level of PFAS. The EPA has a whole list of what you need to look for. Now I know that it's a lot of information for one video, so if you want more from the USGS, the EPA, or the CDC, I'm going to email all of this documentation out to you tonight in my News Girl News Roundup email, so make sure you're signed up.